So now I'm going to demonstrate how to fit a 1780s sleeve, which is uh, very different from a modern sleeve. You can see that the back armhole cuts pretty deeply into the back of the bodice. This was to make the upper back look narrow, which was the ideal of the time, this tightly fitted back. Right now all we've done is pin it shut, so it's, it doesn't have its proper hooks and eyes or anything like that. We have finished the bodice, the neckline's all done, the lining is in, and we've just pinned it on the child so that we can basically get an idea of how it's going to be when it's on. I've also gone ahead and made the sleeve. It's got the ruffles in it, the lace, it's all finished because it's much easier to do a sleeve on its own than to put it in the bodice first and then try to deal with the bodice being in the way while you're finishing the ends. So what our foremothers would have done is called draping and fitting by hand. When you went to a mantua maker, she fit everything to you. She didn't have notches or little marks to match things up with. She did it on the client. So what we're going to have the child do is slide her arm into the sleeve just like she's putting the dress on. And then we pull the sleeve up to where it's meant to be. And we notice this sleeve has a dart in it which is meant to accommodate the elbow. So you want to have the child bend her elbow. There we go. Now we've got that nice fit to the elbow, and you can see I'm not going to pay any attention to the marks on the pattern. Yes, if I didn't have the child, I would follow the marks just as they are, because I've put them in the best place they can be, assuming there is no child to fit to. But if you have the child, ignore the marks if needed, and just fit directly to the dress. So with her elbow bent, what I've been able to do is rotate. I, I, I can see, oh, the sleeve doesn't fit this way because then that won't be on her elbow. She bends her elbow naturally, I fit the dart to the elbow, and then I look up at the top. And I say, okay, see how this naturally fits into this curve here, and on the front. And I'm going to grab my pins off camera. And we're just going to make a couple of pin points so that I know where this sleeve is going when I go to sew it on. First of all, I'm going to mark at the top of the shoulder. Very careful not to pin anybody here. There, we've got the top marked. Now you can unbend your elbow a bit. I'm going to go around. It's, the sleeve is meant to be smooth through the front and have any fullness back here. And the reason is we want to accommodate movement. When someone puts her arms in front, see, we don't want that to pull out. So we're going to have all the fullness and the pleating here between the top of the shoulder and this dropped seam back here. So with the front, I'm just going to smoothly match up. And I am keeping in mind my seam allowance as I go. You don't have to be slavish about saying, oh, this has to be 5 eighths of an inch. You can adjust that when you get to the machine. But for now, just try to pull it over 5 eighths of an inch. Have her stick her arm out a bit. Continue to be careful to keep your fingers behind the fabric so there's no pinning into flesh. Alright, I'm going to cross back over. So I want to make sure our underarm is lining up nicely. Continue to pin from the front around so that we are matching smoothly to the underarm. It gets a little bit tricky as you're running out of opening. Let's just make sure our underarm is covered. Now, coming to the area where we've got this extra material. This is what's going to be pleated, or you can just run some gathering stitches and gather it, but pleating tends to look the nicest. So you can just decide where you want your pleats to go. I'm going to have you put your arm out like that. And the pleats are very tiny. They're not huge. You can have two or you can have three. It just depends on how this is fitting. A little tricky to get it into the, the back curve here, but it will work. It's just a little bit of playing with material. And there's my leftover that I'm going to pleat. And I want to pleat from the top of the shoulder down. Again, the pleating really doesn't matter if you've got it spaced precisely half an inch or precisely three-eighths of an inch. Nothing was precise at this time. It was done by eyeballing it. If I think it looks nice, it's nice. If you think it looks nice, it's perfect. 
So don't obsess about the pleat lines. So on this dress, I've just taken two pleats. That's all I need. The rest is nice and smooth and matches the back curve of the dress. Now keep in mind, of course, what I've done here is this is the right side of the sleeve and this is the right side of the gown. I haven't flipped everything around and pinned from the wrong side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do that when I sit down at the machine. I'm going to take the sleeve off, but I'm going to keep my marks. You can use Taylor's chalk if you want. You could make a mark here and a mark here, and a mark here and a mark here, just to remind you where things went and keep your pleats in place. And then you'll be able to pin it back together as you're sitting at the machine and stitch around. So let's see that elbow bend again. Very nice. I'm going to turn her this way. So we can see the nice smooth line here and the beautiful fall of the ruffle at the top of the elbow. Bingo, you've set your sleeve. Okay, so now I'm seated back down at the machine and I've removed the sleeve from the armhole. But what I did, I'm not using Taylor's chalk because I've had nightmares getting the chalk off the fabric in the past. All I've done is made a mark on the shoulder where the top of the sleeve was pinned and a corresponding mark with a pin on the sleeve itself. So this is where I know I'm going to start pinning when I put the sleeve on uh, right sides together. Then what I did is as I removed the sleeve, I pinned the two pleats in place so I know exactly where they are. What I'm going to do is duplicate these pleats and these marks on the opposite sleeve before I stitch this in place. And that way I know both sleeves are going to be identical and they're going to look great. All right. So I've sewn my sleeves in and I've put the bodice back on this daughter of mine to check the fit. And you want to do this before you go into the skirt steps because you're going to be able to adjust things much more easily with just the bodice by itself. Now, this daughter of mine is broad through her shoulders. The younger daughter that I made the other dress for is narrow through the shoulders. What fit on her absolutely perfectly doesn't fit on this child as easily because the broad shoulders are pushing this neckline out. So what I'm going to do to tweak that fit is something that's very easy. You get a, either a cord or a 1 8 inch ribbon and you're going to run it through the channel that was created when you understitched around the neckline. And then when that's tied inside the bodice, it'll, it'll come out right about here and right about here. And then when the dress is worn, it'll be tied and that's going to pull in this fullness at the neckline and shoulders which will look perfect. But there's another area of fit. What looked fine when we were setting the sleeve actually turns out to be a problem here. You can see there's a little bit of bunching where these pleats are. Where the arm is supposed to accommodate fullness, we've actually just created a pucker. But like I said, these things were done by eyeballing and by hand. So all I'm going to do is take out these pleats here and I'm going to shift them down to here because where she needs the fullness with her broader back is here in this curve. It's not closer to the top of the sleeve. So I'm actually going to drop the pleats below this shoulder seam. So they're going to come more like right here. Then that's going to create a bit of fullness here for the pull across her shoulder and then we'll get rid of this bulge. So never be afraid to take something apart and redo it. That's what the seam rippers for. My mom taught me as you sew, so shall you rip. And that's the best advice I ever got. So always feel free to tweak. This is going to come out the pleats are going to shift downward and then we're going to have the fullness here where it's more natural and where it accommodates the fullness of her shoulder and we'll get rid of this little bulge here. But we still got a beautiful fit on the elbow with the fall of the ruffle. So other than that, other than this little tweak, we don't need to take the entire sleeve out. All we need to do is shift. There you go.